Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm outside, it's a beautiful day. I'm standing in front of my very big, giant, stinking uh, compost pile. I'm gonna be sharing a really beautiful, actually a couple of beautiful recipes with you guys today, some side dishes and how those relate to this compost pile. But the reason I have this compost pile is because one of the things I'm learning about gardening, especially um, with as much volume as I wanna kind of put out, is you have to think about creating soil, otherwise it becomes very costly with compost and buying that stuff. So creating your own um, dirt or compost for your plants, super important. And one of the ways I can actually create such a big compost pile is that I have this huge tractor. <laughs> so I actually need to turn this right now because it's kind of starting to dry out in a few spots. And so I'm gonna get my tractor and turn this big compost pile and then we'll dive right into the recipes. <laughs> All right. So one of the things I actually want to talk about right now is that this, um, the compost pile right now, wow, that's actually really, really hot. Um, it cooks. So basically it's kind of like a big oven, like a big dirt oven. And you throw green stuff like grass clippings and you know, tree uh, trimmings and leaves and stuff like that with some dead stuff and dirt. And it starts to form this kind of mixture of bacteria and starts to cook in this big pile of stinky stuff. So anyways, I'm going to go show you uh, some of the things I've been using with my compost as far as some of the things I've been growing and uh, how it relates to one of the side dishes I'm going to be showing you guys today in the kitchen. Come on. Come on. So as you'll notice with this Swiss chard, it has these stalks on it. And uh, one of the things I used to do in kitchens is you take them off with a little paring knife. But anyways, you end up with the, with the greens and the stock, and I'm going to pickle these and then use these to saute. So I'm just going to jam through this real quick. And that should be good. So I'm gonna put this all back in to my basket, all the leaves. I'm actually going to make um, a little pickling liquid real quick, because I'm gonna pickle these, uh, the stems, the Swiss chard stems, because that's gonna be a beautiful garnish for the dish at the very end. And you get to utilize something most people would throw away. Pan on the stove. And this is a super simple pickling liquid. Sugar and um, salt, and vinegar. I guess I'm gonna use all of it. I'm also gonna put a nice little splash of water, sugar, and a good amount of salt. And just let that boil, and then once it homogenizes, uh, we can use it. All right, so while that's boiling, I'm just gonna cut these Swiss chard stalks into like these cute little obliques. It's gonna be a beautiful garnish. All right, so I'm going to put these in a bowl. And then I'm gonna pickle them with this warm or hot pickling liquid. These are going to just get slightly tender because of how hot the pickling liquid is, and uh, they'll cook just slightly, and uh, kind of soak up that beautiful, you know, vinegar flavor and some of the salt and the sugar, and it actually preserves the colors. One of the really nice things when you pickle, um, you know, the stalks or anything, it kind of really makes it vibrant. The acid brings out a lot of the pigments, and uh, if I were to saute it like I'm going to do with this, they would, you know, all the colors would just sort of mesh together or meld together. And it's not super pretty, it's delicious, but it's not super pretty. So, all right, I'm gonna turn this big pot on 
And we're just gonna do a very simple, quick saute or like a wilting of the leaves with the garlic tops, some lemon juice, olive oil, salt and pepper, and then we'll finish up the dish. Pans on high heat, well, medium to high heat, and you wanna do a little bit of lipid, a little bit of oil first. Good amount. <clears throat> and the reason I have this big, big pan is because if I were just to throw this all into a small pan, it's not really gonna cook the way you want. So this is fast, hot, and it keeps um, your green super vibrant green. Oh, before I do this, let me do a little bit of the garlic tops first. And it's all very fast. This goes in, and you'll start to hear it pop. <laughs> and then some salt, and just a little bit of lemon. This is gonna kind of steam it, just lightly. That's good. The first batch, you almost wanna cook less than the rest because it's all gonna be on the bottom, or you can get a bigger tray. A little bit more olive oil. And you repeat the process once more. Swiss chard's done, pickled Swiss chard ribs are done. And uh, I have these dried chilies. They're a little smoky. I'm gonna make it really quick. My chili oil just to finish it. Or finish the Swiss chard. Super quick and easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. A little bit of salt. Okay. Super easy, super fast. Nothing too fancy, it's just a nice little finishing touch. So now I got my plate, I got all the necessary requirements, all the mise en place ready to go, and I'm just gonna plate it up with my spoon and some of this beautiful steaming Swiss chard. So it's a perfect side dish. I like how fresh it is, you know. A lot of times greens can just be, uh, just they turn that brown weird color no one likes. And a few of these pickled pieces around and they're really vibrant and beautiful and have like that sharp acid. Some of the oil, straight from the mortar. And it's gonna add a nice spice, a little bit of smokiness, and it's a beautiful finishing touch to this Swiss chard dish. All right, so the Swiss chard's done. That was a very beautiful dish. It's on to the butternut squash. But this is gonna be a very simple dish. It's probably gonna take you maybe 30 to 40 minutes, probably maybe even less. Um, and it's a very simple roasted butternut squash. We're using the broiler, very high heat, some sweet stuff, thyme, butter, uh, but let's get started. Squash can be a kind of a pain in the butt <laughs> to prepare because it's hard to cut. But if you get the angles right and you kind of, you know, you're really placing everything kind of at a right angle and making sure you're a lot of downward force. You can't be scared of squash because otherwise you're always gonna be hacking at it and just trying to figure it out. And plus, each squash is different. Some have a little bit thicker skin, some are a little bit more tender. So you're gonna have to gauge um, you know, how much force you're putting into each cut. But it's very simple. Take the top and the bottom off, split it down the middle for this preparation at least. Scoop the seeds out. We're just gonna simply slice it up and move on to the next process. this, I'm actually gonna split in half. I should be cutting flat side down, <laughs> but I'm being a little lazy right now. Okay. And sometimes when you keep the, the vegetable whole, you know, skin on and all that good stuff, it just has a little bit different of a roasted flavor when you're done with it than if you were to cut it up into small pieces. Salt, pepper, And these will go in the oven for about 35 minutes on broil. All right, so the squash 
is done. It's nice and charbroiled, or broiled. It's pretty charred. <clears throat> this is exactly how I want it, because that char gives just a little bit more like dynamic flavor to what could be boring squash flavor, although I really love butternut squash in all facets. So anyways, I'm going to basically just scoop this out and start plating, um, but this is as simple as a side dish gets. Let's go with this one. Basically whole roasting a vegetable and then plating it very rustic. You could peel this if you wanted to, but sometimes, like I said before, the skin or keeping the integrity of the squash while you're cooking it can just impart more flavor um, of that, you know, that squash that you want. Another thing is if you roast it whole with the seeds, you can get a little bit more, like if you do cold roasting. But this is absolutely perfect, super tender. I mean, I just scoop it right out, and then I'm just gonna plate it with a little bit of um, honey and some thyme, and we're good. All right, so the butternut squash is done, char broiled, honey, thyme, goodness, Swiss chard is done. I'm very excited to taste both of these and run through the flavors, so let me do that. So this is the one I definitely would order at a restaurant or um, kind of favor if someone made it just because it's definitely my type of flavors. Mm. Sweet, you got the chard outside. The floral thyme is very, very nice. It's a good little addition to the butternut squash because the squash has a nice sweet flavor to it naturally, but when you add a little bit of honey, it just kind of brings it out even more and just makes the squash taste, I feel like a little more squashy. <laughs> Every time I get a bite of the, that charred bit, it's like magical. Very, very good and very simple. Throw it in the oven, scoop it out, and you got a side dish. This is cool because I like the pickled aspect. You get a little bit of that like mature vinegar flavor from the pickling of the stems, but you also get a nice little tender bite almost like spinach or like a, a mix between spinach and like a beet top. You got the acid, a little bit of salt, a little flavor, and that really hard um, pan roast or the, the wilting method. Perfect for this because it maintains that beautiful green color that you're really looking for in like a sauteed green so it doesn't look like brown and gross. It's very presentable. I really love both of these. I, I kind of favor this one as far as like ordering it or you know eating it at someone's house pile up on that. This I'm very, I'm liking a lot because I grew this in my backyard with some of that compost that I showed you guys. And it's just kind of cool to see all the stages and what it ends up being on your plate. Um, so I thought that was really cool. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the recipes. If you did, make sure you thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Make sure you check the uh, description box below for equipment links and ingredient lists. And I will see you guys next time with another recipe. Later folks.